YouTube, what's going on? Air of Carthage here. Oh my gosh, it's been a while. My family <laughs> has had the flu. And um, if you all wonder why there haven't been any videos, it's because Mrs. Air has been bedridden. So if you ever feel like you enjoy my videos and, and you like having them, Mrs. Air is obviously the reason because when she isn't able to be herself, the videos are gone because I'm so busy trying to keep up with all the things that she does. So it makes it impossible for me to be able to make content. So really appreciate Mrs. Air and I'm happy to be back. I'm very excited. She is on the mend. Things are getting better. So you'll hang in there with me and we'll be able to get right back at it. Anyway, um, we're back in the Itza campaign. I don't know if this will be the final episode or not. There's a lot of turns before this thing's over. It depends on kind of how things go, but we do have an opportunity to take out one of these rogue armies. It's going to be quite the fight if we do. Um, the auto-resolve thinks we're not going to win, which tells me that we're probably in a pretty good position to win. Let's start this thing off right with some good old battle. Now this battle is just going to be interesting. We've got a Skaven warlord leading a bunch of chaos troops and even some rogue Bretonians here. I mean, seriously? An Arachnorok spider? Wow. No, seriously, though, I love these rogue armies. I'm glad CA adds this kind of stuff to the campaign. It just creates some extra fun that, I mean, why not? I mean, this game's got so many crazy diverse factions, and then you combine some of them into one, and it just creates some really funny stuff. Anyway, check out these gobos here. Commanding the Arachnorok Spider. They're going to come under the fire of my solar engines. A little solar power in their lives, some clean energy. <laughs> Oh man, the lizards are always sharing their clean energy with people. I'm just not sure anybody wants it. Nice. Yeah, you see, see that uh, they're not going to want to just sit here and take this, so Skaven Doomwheel is going to come out on the chase. And yeah, this was somewhat intentional. You can see that my dinos will be falling back. They were taking the fire of some of the Doom Diver catapults, but. Uh, it's actually okay, the Doom Diver catapults won't cause tremendous damage. This is going to leave Virak and his army ready to strike. We do have a Scar Veteran who will be an excellent unit for holding back the Doom Wheel, and potentially the Arachnorok Spider with the anti large capability, whereas Virak the Croc is going to be more of an anti infantry unit, but still, he'll deal a lot of armor piercing. So, Scar Veteran's going to come in and do what he does best. I stop this doom wheel from getting into my infantry. You can see now, however, the doom divers are starting to unload on my infantry line. But we've got an excellent firing position for the solar engines, and it'll provide you some nice cinematics while you get to watch the doom wheel get wrecked as well. Now the Arachnorok spider is headed in, and uh, it's the current target. I don't know how you can miss an Arachnorok Spider, but we've managed to do it a couple of times. Oh man, do I hate spiders. Killing Arachnorok Spiders brings me a particular joy in just about every battle where I face them. Let's watch the uh, reign of the solar engines continue. There is a unit of Forsaken. I'm going to hit them with some Temple Guards. That will not be a fight that they enjoy very much see the spider, despite dancing around on its eight disgusting legs, is being dealt with. Ooh, I love that sound. The sound design is wonderful. I was shooting the traitorous Grail Relic there for a moment, just because they deserve it, and I'm pretty sure that the rest of Bretonia would approve of me shooting some rogue Bretonians who brought such a holy relic to fight with such an army, an army with no chivalry. So the fight's going to get started proper here. I see the Forsaken engaging my Temple Guardsmen. It's not a fight that's going to go particularly well for them. And the Spider is down. Those units will be able to be reallocated. And now we're going to be able to see a full-on assault of infantry where they have it. It's going to be some uh, fanatic archers back here. They're releasing their uh, loonies there. Now we do have some uh, cavalry that's broken through. These horned ones are going to be excellent at cleaning up skirmishers. They're shielded. They have high attack rates and pretty decent melee defense. They can get in and cause a lot of damage. And over here, they were doing well until they got hit by a ton of loonies. Gobbo fanatics. 
But a little help has arrived now in the form of an engine of the gods. I don't really think that these goblin archers are going to be loving life too much. I'm going to force one of them away with the engine of the gods. It won't do a whole lot, but it'll at least get them out of the way for a moment and stop them from firing. You can see that the rest of the army of Scalpake is in complete and utter disarray as green skins forsaken and all manner of traitors and disgusting beasts are pushed off the battlefield with extreme prejudice. Those guys are pretty handy, like, doing some damage coming through your units there. Can't say that I enjoy fighting against it. But I do enjoy killing these Gabo archers. <laughs> and die they will. Like I said, uh, horned ones are really spectacular, albeit a little bit overkill in a missile cleanup purpose, but very, very good at it. This is going to lead us to a clear victory over Scalpake. All right. So, been waiting a while to shut down Scalpake there. Hopefully he's got a Scalpake. Having a skull crushed. That might be appropriate here. Rogue factions. I love rogue factions. It's such a cool thing that they've added to the game. We can't actually make it to attack the, uh, the city yet. So, we're going to be waiting in position, more or less, um, for that opportunity. Could mount these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Skink Priest on the Pterodon. That actually makes a lot of sense. We can't get Carnosaur until 18, unfortunately. Which means that we're still a bit out of range here, but let's get some Deadly Onslaught. I don't think that can hurt anything. I mean, can we have enough Deadly Onslaught in this campaign? And I think the answer to that is obvious. No! There's never enough Deadly Onslaught to eat his army here. Let's get Immortality for the Wonderful Lizard of Oz. Or did I, did I put Wonderfu? It is Wonderfu Lizard of Oz. Yeah, I'll bet you all have pointed that out to me before. <laughs> and I just haven't noticed it. Uh, let's see, Deadly Onslaught for Digga. What else we got going through here? The salty one? Ooh, he's salty. Very salty. We've got this uh, jerk rogue army here, and there's a couple more rogue factions that are rolling around, and we probably want to just make full march to the end of the rogue factions, which means we got to head through this way. So we'll try and bust through with Patchy. That small army that's left behind is of little concern to me. Admiral Pardex, like, hung up over here, but he's not actually attacking anything, so I think we're safe. And we can move another army over to assist there just in case. Let's uh, go keep resettling with uh, John Hammond's army. Might as well go take back whatever settlements that the uh, Skaven Hordes burn to the ground, like Skaven Hordes do. No big surprise with their behavior there. Here we go. All right, looks like we got another rogue army here at the Caverns of the Great Bat. Sure. Why not? <laughs> and then the Skaven clan, the Pillars of the Unseen Constellation. Oh yeah, have your fun. Just have it. It's all good. All right, settlements raised. We got a gifted musician. I mean, who doesn't like music? We can't actually... Hmm. Well, that's frustrating. I was thinking I could get to the... Uh... Yeah, well, that's the only way. Never mind. <laughs> Back on to land we go. And there's going to be a uh, vampire attrition over here. No thanks to the uh, vampire coast jerks. We probably have a lot of stuff we need to build. Um, I'm going to take care of that. I don't know if it's really worthwhile showing you all. For, so for the sake of not wasting too much time, I will uh, go ahead and just kind of skip ahead and see you on the next turn in. I was saying I would skip ahead, but I, you know, still obviously had movement points. So excuse my race there. Aw, <laughs> oh, poor Scalpake. So long, loser. Enemy killed in battle. Fantastic. That's the best kind of enemy. The kind that's killed in battle. Did y'all know that? In case you didn't, it is. Okay? It really is. Why don't we have transcendent healing? I feel like that should be a part of, well, probably because we're trying to get Greater Arcane Conduit, which is also really nice. Let's finish off Dwellers Below so we can get at that. Um, and then we've got uh, Furak here who can retake the Monument of Izatal. Occupy that for Itza once again. 
about to rebuild it, of course. Thanks a lot. Jerks. Jerks, jerks, jerks. Jerks. Did I mention they were jerks? Because I kind of meant it. All right, now the Unknown Skaven Clan's got a uh, Red Ogre <laughs> Bone Crusher here outside of Spactazuma. But uh, these guys, uh, really no match for us at this point up against Gustav the Great Croc. And I don't think that this will be a particularly difficult battle to win, but we're going to play it for the sake of we get to kill Unknown Skaven Clan. Outside Spectazuma, Ixstone Flesh Cutter. It's on top of his Rat Ogre Bone Crusher or whatever these things are called. I think that's the name of it. And Gustav the Great Croc and his army are attacking, as well as the reinforcements from Spectazuma's garrison. And the Skaven are going to find themselves heavily overmatched and in a desperate fight for their lives. Let's check it out here. I do a bait and switch. <laughs> you thought you were charging skinks. Instead, you get Croxagores and a Stegodon. Enjoy that, Sensor Monk, or Plague Monk Sensor Bears. Sensor Monk Plague Bears, whatever it is. Just make up some names for them. See that the uh, Rat Ogre himself, the Warlord here, charging down, being attacked by Gustav and his Sacred Croxagores. So these guys ready to take on their foe. We can see more units pushing in, and then more from the flank still. So the Skaven are going to find themselves being completely outflanked and overrun. Their main lines are suffering pretty badly at the moment. You see here that there's a whole bunch of Death Runners balled up, and my Skink Priest and Fire Leech Bolas cleaned them out pretty quick. Told them that they best to move along. They won't be sleeping here being chased down and destroyed. Got some uh, Colossodon hunters back here too. They're going to be tearing apart a doom wheel. You can see that the uh, Skaven skirmisher is now under threat by my cavalry, but it was actually slowed down just for a moment by some plague monk sensor bears while a couple more units are free up on the flanks. This Skaven skirmishers are very difficult to catch in campaign. They get extra speed buffs, they get leadership buffs, they get melee defense buffs, and they become very powerful for what you would expect. Now, they're good units under any circumstances, but in this case, they become almost too good. And you can see now, uh, I'll zoom out where you can kind of see it here, the battle is pretty much over. It's just a ball of Skaven skirmishers, and this can happen sometimes in campaign battles, and if you don't bring the right tools, you can actually lose because of this. I want, I want to just show you... I'm going to fast forward here, and I want you to see how difficult it is for me to get some of these units to die. So, like, this gutter runner gets caught, and then just starts straight up easily winning the battle until I bring in reinforcements. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of cinematic here because this is really just kind of a chase operation. But you can see you can use, you know, try and get them pinned up against the lines and other stuff. But they can stay in front of you almost indefinitely were it not for the fact that I have some pterodon units here. Skinks can be good at dealing with these units early in the campaign, but not so much in late campaign, because they'll just lose the melee. Well, Ixstone Flesh Cutter um, had his skin removed shortly after the battle. I think it's befitting to his name. At least he was a sacrifice to Sotek, and he was able to accomplish something in the short course of his rodent life. So the Unknown Skaven clan is quickly going back to the Unknown, I think is uh, where we're pushing them in a big hurry. So Gustav is his first level up in a while. The Spawnkin should be the thing that helps him the most. A lot of this other stuff just won't really make sense for his army. Replenishment rate? Sure. We can do this. Lizard Wizard. He's immune. He's got just about everything that he can dream of, though he's only on a Pterodon. The Ancient Steggy comes at 20... or Sorry, the Engine of the Gods comes at 27. We could put him on an Ancient Steggy for now. I think it'll make him a little more um, versatile. We've already got the Ancient Stegodon here for the Skink Priest. Let's head on over to uh, Slippery. Ooh, it's actually pretty good. Be on that big dinosaur. Let him use that. He's got another skill point that we can drop into uh, Bottomless Quiver. 
We are really dishing out some uh, skill points because of all the fights. Let's see, Farak. Is that the Saurus Warriors? What else has he got? Temple Guardsman? So let's go to uh, Sacred Guardian. Start pumping up these troops even more, and they are already looking quite good. We can reissue a commandment here. Let's get the uh, alignment of crafting going. And the geomantic web will be growing. It got ruined in a couple of sectors, but we are building it, and we're going to have a massive geomantic web with full capabilities, I might add. A fully functioning geomantic web. It's an ambush in the jungle, folks. Patchy is going to be ambushed by Trer. We'll see whether or not this ambush is dangerous. On his approach to the Pillars of the Unseen Constellation, Patchy the Slan is ambushed by Trer, the foul Skaven. And they must take the battle to the Skaven. As the battle starts, even though it was an ambush, the AI, in its all-knowing brilliance, did not deploy all the way up on my troops ready to take advantage of it. They've actually deployed a ways back. And this is going to cost them, as it will give my army time to organize and prepare for the upcoming Skaven Onslaught. So you can see that there's a nice position available to my troops. Apache and his Scar Veteran are already on the hill, eager for battle. And the Ripperdactyl Riders will be swinging around the flank and headed towards the Plague Claw Catapult. Cavalry will be held in reserve to go chase down skirmishers, and then the salamander hunting packs are really looking to get some fireballs into that hell pit abomination, which should be weak to fire damage. Speaking of hell pit abomination and rat ogres, they are charging my Saurus warriors rather than my temple warriors, which is probably a better place for them to be. So Patchy is going to imbue shield of thorns here, to make sure and give a lot of resistance to damage and extra melee attack early on in this fight, and put these guys down see here that the Scar Veteran is going to split the uh, gap in the line and take off after skirmishers, as are my Saurus Cavalry who are pushing that way already. And the Plague Claw Catapult is about to get absolutely downed by Ripper Dactyl Riders, while the skirmishers are pushed away from the fight and into the woods. Burning Realignment cleans out the main Skaven infantry force in the center of the fight, and already the Engine of the Gods have caused some routes on the left-hand flank as the Skaven ambush wasn't quite an ambush and it's now left itself in a very difficult position. It's a Scar Veteran ripping apart Poison Globe Bombardiers and you can see, or sorry, Poison Wind Globadiers, I should say, not Death Globe Bombardiers. <laughs> they get uh, a little bit confusing there sometimes. You can see how, just how fast these Skaven units are, which makes kind of sense. These guys are like just little assassin skirmishers. It is very difficult for my heavy cavalry to catch them under any circumstances, and sometimes when poison units are nearby, you just can't. You can see this ball of skirmishers is once again the only thing keeping a fight going. But fortunately for me, I've got the Ripper Dactyl Riders, and what I'm going to attempt to do is single out individual units like we did here, and then crush it with overwhelming force and quickly. And then that swings the power bar, more into your favor. Now there's not much left over here, just uh, the Grace here. We're up against here, Trer, and uh, he is not in a good place in life. In fact, he's very near the end of his life, and his forces were utterly defeated, and he had no more reinforcements, so what I expected may have been a double army ambush was actually not. One more unit of Skaven skirmishers, being hunted down by the Ripper Dactyl Riders. These guys have anti-infantry uh, capability and should do pretty well at picking apart these skirmish units. This one's actually going to get routed near the white line. Should be relatively easy to draw off. Meanwhile, I was chasing the other skirmishers who can just almost indefinitely stay in front of my heavy cavalry, so instead I'm going to pull back through the woods and allow my cavalry to be shielded by the trees while this support unit over here is torn apart and once again the balance bar dropped and it will be forced off the battlefield allowing my Ripper Dactyl Riders to split up and we're going to go circumnavigate around the flanks of the Skaven so it'll be much like this the cavalry pushes the center 
and then the Ripper Dactyls move around in order to cut off the retreat of the remaining Skaven skirmishers, and then we'll take the uh, troops that have won this fight and also move in behind the Skaven. See how it plays out here. So you gotta be a little patient with these units. Though my patience with the Skaven is certainly worn thin near the end of this campaign. I'll just kind of let you all enjoy some of the beautiful cinematic goodness that is this campaign. I can't wait to make another one of these, and I have a really cool idea for it. I'm going to make a video and talk about it a little bit on my channel in an update soon, but I've got a really fun idea to try and make these cinematic campaigns even more fun and hopefully even interactive. And then for those who are watching, and I'm going to have to find a way to do this, maybe a potential huge prize for someone. So yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So if you enjoy these campaigns, I think that you'll enjoy it even more. So here we go. Skirmishers are now caught. There's no getting away. The Salamander hunting packs have found their quarry and joined up with the Ripper Dactyl Riders. And the remainder of the Skaven forces here are going to be shredded by a combination of flying cavalry and heavy cavalry. I love it. Get wrecked. Alright. The ambush of Treyer was poorly set. And uh, another Skaven scheme defeated. That leaves yet another Skaven clan here nearby, which is going to destroy the Pillars of the Unseen Constellation. Not a huge loss to me, but a little frustrating since it means that I don't think Patchy's army will be able to continue to replenish. Alright, Spectazuma is safe. I'm going to force march towards the Wellsprings of Eternity and we'll cut off the unknown Skaven clan uh, in the north. Then that leaves Patchy with an opportunity to intercept Boil Roll Killer, which is one of their last main armies. And as per usual, plenty of these uh, annoying skirmishers, but I'm um, pretty sure that Patchy's got this one in the bag. We're going to go put this to rest. Well, this should be the last stand for the most part of the unknown Skaven clan. They do have one other small army besides this, but most of the Skaven will be able to be caught, trapped, and destroyed here. And Patchy gets the great honor of being the slan who helps banish Skaven from both the... Well, basically from the New World. It's about to say both the Old and the New World, but we really didn't do much of anything in the Old World in this campaign, as it was Vortex. They get the benefit of banishing the Skaven from the New World particularly in Lustria. Oh, that Scar veteran loves the taste of Skaven in the morning. Will be some warp lightning, but uh, my uh, Engine of the Gods have something a little special planned here. I want you all to see this. This is a double burning alignment. Oh, yeah. Charred Skaven, anyone? And then Patchy's going to finish it up with the little dwellers below. Skaven just will not get any mercy. None from these armies or any lizard faction, I would imagine. The Ripper Dactyl Riders are hungry. Man, I love playing Lizardmen. It's really fun. If you all haven't played a Lizardmen campaign, you definitely got to do it. There's just so many fun units. Very fun faction to play. Very satisfying. I find a few units that you may want to spend some time with, like Ancient Salamanders. Gosh, it's a fun unit, especially if you're playing against a faction that has, like, blocky infantry or skirmishers. They just cause so much damage. And then Ripper Dactyl Riders, a very fun unit for getting skirmishers and chasing down routing units, and then Horned Ones. I mean, yeah, they're a heavy cavalry, and in multiplayer, it's hard to use them, but they are just so good at cleaning up units in, uh, like, infantry units. We'll do okay in a fight against large, but just so good at cleaning up infantry units. Well, it's just going to be one crushing defeat after another for the unknown Skaven clan. A couple of which have been at the hands of a slant of my namesake, which makes me happy. Brings, brings a little tear of joy to my eye. I've got a potion of toughness too for someone. That will be nice. Let's uh, finish off Boil Rolk here. Boreal Joke, whatever his name is. Something like that. 
All right, Patchy is uh, probably able, well, we've got to give him immortality. And we've got to give him our greater arcane conduit, at which point we'll probably try and work our way towards healing if he's able to get it. Digga becomes immortal as well. So that's pretty sweet, honestly, to get both of them the immortal award save. Heck yeah, we'll take that. All right, Monument Iza Talazars. We can just pin these last few groups of hoodlums in. And we will be in complete dominance of Lustria once again. Let's rebuild our special buildings here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is good. So we're in pretty good condition. We've got to move on and try and take out High Elves. We can't reach them there. If we head this way... Wait, are we in Force March? No. Um, if we head into the territory of the vampires, I'm gonna have to be using an encamp stance to prevent attrition, but we should be able to swing around to the Shrine of Asurid. And uh, I'm going to keep Virakara's army uh, in the vicinity so that we can ward off High Elf attacks. His army not quite up to the strength of Gorox, but still quite powerful. So it'll have to do in terms of being able to hold back what onslaughts the High Elves may send in a last defense of Ulthwan, and I do expect that they will be sending um, some potentially dangerous stuff at us. Agility Lizard Missile Resistance could be quite good against the High Elves. I think that just leaves us uh, ready to end another turn, unless there is any building for me to do at this point. There is not, so let's end this turn. Well, it looks like uh, Scrot has decided to just go ahead and suicide the last of the unknown Skaven clan, and I appreciate that. Saves me time. The unknown Skaven clan is gone, folks. Gone. Oh my goodness. Did you see what happened to our income there when we finished that research? Alright, Vashnar needs a little bit of a... Uh, needs a little bit of a lesson. If you will. I do need to recolonize the Pillars of the Unseen constellation before someone else does it for us. And uh, we're going to have to head south at this point. I'll take Furak here as well. Let's begin that march south towards the Chamber of Visions to stop Bashnar and his minions. Looks like we have recolonized what we need to here except for Temple of Kara. So let's do that. We now have all the territory in Lustria recolonized, except for our uh, Caverns of the Bat. Now, there were some Tomb Kings of the Dune Kingdoms that are headed towards my territory, no doubt attempting to help their High Elf allies. And our Skink Priest has leveled up here. I think in this army it would probably be pretty handy to have this guy on a Stegodon or something at this point to help crush through infantry and archers. Leandra? Her army is not going to be up to par <laughs> for destroying Virakara, and I don't know what... Yeah, they're going to run, <laughs> as I would expect. I'm going to have to see if I can force march back up here. Nope, I can't go back to land on this turn. That's a bit annoying that I can't, but won't be the end of the world. Got to go around this settlement. It's going to waste a lot of marching time. There we are. We'll be getting close to the shrine, which should lead to some interesting battles in an interesting episode all by itself. So we will not finish things this episode, but we'll continue them on what is quite possibly going to be a final episode, I would say, on the next one. Because if we're looking at the turns and the way everything goes... Now, some people have been, Air, I wish these episodes weren't so short. I spend a, probably an hour and a half creating each one of these episodes that you may only see as 30 minutes. It takes a great deal of time. Uh, to make these episodes longer doesn't really gain me any views or anything else to my benefit. In fact, making them longer sometimes actually leads to less views and less view duration. I don't know why that is. I understand some of you like seeing these be longer. 
And I don't mind making them longer, but it is difficult to do in the time frame I have. And like I said, it's because what amount you watch is not necessarily the amount of time that it took me to create it. So hopefully that makes sense for those who are wondering sometimes why the episodes aren't as long as maybe some would like. All right. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. We got some important battles done. We defeated the unknown Skaven clan. Itza and Lustria are safe. And now really the final battle is being prepared as Rodar and Alistar are holed up at the shrine of Assyrian hoping to uh, fight off Gorok, who is slowly marching his way there. Nothing has stopped his army yet. I will be curious to see whether anything is capable of doing so, and I will see you all there.